set. Roll camera. Sound speed. Mark, please. And action. Oh, hey. Welcome back to Students in Focus. I'm Katie, a student producer at UEN. In this show, we focus on student work from all over the state of Utah. Our first feature is by CJ, a student from Judge Memorial High School. Voices for Ukraine features a concert held by the Utah Ukrainian Association and the Madeline Choir School. On March 21st, the Utah Ukrainian Association and the Madeline Choir School held a concert at the Cathedral of the Madeline titled Voices for Ukraine. Musicians from the Madeline Choir School, Utah Opera, the University of Utah, and Utah Symphony performed. In the program, seniors Alex Boyer, Vova Yurchenko, and Denise Feretor performed. Von Ragnett was among that audience tonight and is a part of the Utah Ukrainian Association, helping Ukrainians from Utah and helped bring this concert together. Some people, they don't have like basic needs, like they don't, they basically spend most of the uh, daytime like in bomb shelter. And we as an organization, we're trying to be like, uh, find out what kind of needs they have and we're trying to send it to them, you know, as soon as possible. So basically, as a Utahns who would like to help, just go on our website and you can find all information, the stuff that Ukraine needs right now. And basically, if you would like to donate some money, you can find the account, how you can donate, and all the kind of details are going to be there. Alex Boyer was in attendance and proud to support Ukraine. Everybody is suffering. Everybody's going through something. And I've found the happiness for me is always trying to find a way to support. It doesn't have to be big. Sometimes it's just your presence, you know, to be in there for other people. Um, I think it's just a powerful thing, just building community in any way, shape or form. of the church, artists and coordinators Alina Torkova and Elena Barlow organized an art sale, Art for Peace. So today we hosted Art for Peace, a fundraiser for Yelena's charity that she founded 15 years ago. Um, the charity's name is Stella's House and it's um, currently working with the Ukrainian refugees who are coming in into Moldova, which is the poorest country in Europe. And as of Latest statistics, I believe there are over two and a half million refugees from Ukraine already, um, and that number is expected to go up to 10 million. There's a lot in the news right now about Ukraine, and we all know how news cycles happen, and we anticipate that in a week or in, in uh, you know, a few weeks' time, this will not be the new, you know, the new hype of the day. So we encourage you to continue keeping Ukraine in your thoughts, because the refugee crisis that's going on today will be there, for, unfortunately, for months, if not years. Be aware of what's going on, because the enemy is there. And we believe enemy won't stop with just the Ukraine. It's not just the problem of Ukraine right now. But with the whole support that we're having right now, I think it's going to be easy to overcome. We are all united. We are all in this together. We all want to support the cause. It doesn't matter what country you're from or what language you speak. So I would like to appreciate all your guys' efforts and really appreciate especially people in Utah. So thank you. The Voices for Ukraine concert and Art for Peace fundraised over $25,000 with all proceeds going to sending supplies to Ukrainians in need.
I'm interested in a career path that makes a lot of money. I thought I wanted to do like strictly documentary journalism type stuff. In the film world, I'd like to be either an editor or a DP. Uh, two will have to be further, closer, okay. a little closer. I'm thinking about going into like um, production. I think I want to do cinematography now. Right now I'm really uh, looking to go into post-production because it's something I enjoy a lot more than being on set. Uh, maybe working more with sound, assistant directing, uh, script supervising. Action! I chose Salt Lake Community College because I heard that their program was more advanced and more hands-on than any of the other schools around. We're teaching people how to grab ski stands and set them up and put flags on them, use cameras. Uh, from day one, they're using uh, post-production equipment and cameras and, and uh, a lot of hands-on. So we got a Black Magic Cinema camera, we got a Red Epic and a Red Scarlet camera uh, with complete lens packages, map boxes and the whole filters and everything. So they, our students learn how to build cameras and learn how to do it properly and they're able to go do that on, a, on, a, on an actual film set. I've had a great experience so far. I've had enough support from all of my fellow students in groups making projects. I feel like I learn a lot from the teachers. I feel like I could probably leave with the associates and go on a movie set and be prepared. Do you have a film or media event coming up? We'd love to hear from you. Visit our website at uen.org slash students in focus to share with us. Up next, we have a personal narrative by Gray Jensen, a student from SpyHop Productions. SpyHop is a digital media arts center that supports students who are interested in film, music, audio, and design. Gray shared this description with us. This short personal narrative was created as part of the film apprenticeship program to describe how I fell in love with photography and filmmaking. Being privileged enough to grow up recreating in the outdoors has shaped my view of the world and creative process. This has fostered a goal of documenting connections between humans and outdoor spaces. My first memories were formed in the outdoors. From an early age, my parents had me in nature, whether that was hiking, biking, climbing, anything. They helped me form a valuable connection to the environment and people around me. I like to look through their old photos because it's a reminder of how powerful capturing memories like these are. Nights nice sitting around the campfire, long drives, and suffer fests during the early hours of the morning are only some of the experiences that have shaped who I am and how I see the world. Unsurprisingly, I've fallen in love with being outside. I think it's this love that first opened my eyes to photography and filmmaking. Having a camera in my hands was a way to capture these experiences and share them with the world. Not only that, in the past couple of years I've realized that storytelling of all kinds opens up a world of opportunities for adventure. I aspire to tell stories that matter or that show a unique view of the world. I want to document the big moments and the small ones. I want to capture motion but also evoke it. And I want to use film to raise awareness and better communities. The people and places I've experienced throughout my life have been and will always be what make me, me.
Share your unique perspective with the world through digital storytelling. Learn more at uen.org slash students in focus to have your media considered for an upcoming episode of Students in Focus. I signed up for audio apprenticeship as I wanted to expand what I could do with music and also just get to know more about how I could make it. I signed up because I really want to do audio as a career and this is just kind of helping further my knowledge. I heard animation and free class. <laughs> There's this really cool place called Spy Hops and I kind of fell in love with it. Some of the first skills I learned was how to use your voice. As well as like how lighting works, how to build a camera and stuff like that. Uh, I've learned to empathize with the audience more, which has helped me to draw more people in so they'd be more willing to see what something's about. I feel like you learn a lot more than you do in like you would in a college class because you get hands-on experience in everything that you're doing. It's a really good environment. It's a very good community. I feel like self-expression is like really empowered here. You're not scared to be who you are around people. The environment is so great. Everyone here is so nice and accepting and like we're all just like trying to follow our passions and learning and growing from each other. Everyone's great. <laughs> Super happy, chaotic, fun times. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is Beyond the A by Jace, a student from Spy Hop Productions. Jace produced this in the Real Stories class, which is a free class offered by Spy Hop every summer. My name is Emma Lee and my pronouns are she, her. My name is Shaylee and I go by she, her pronouns. My name is Haley Alpers and I, my pronouns are uh, she and her. I go as the birth, uh, the gender I was born with. <laughs> I identify as aromantic, asexual, bi-attracted. I identify as being on both the aromantic and asexual spectrums. Identify? Well, I now identify uh, as asexual. Asexual. Oof. That is a variety of things. So my Simple explanation is if you're aromantic and or asexual, because those don't necessarily always coincide, it just means you are one who experiences little to no romantic or sexual attraction towards others of any gender or sex. Hey, do you want to go over to my place? Uh, do you want to make out? Um, no thanks. I feel like there's a general, uh, a huge misconception about what it means to be aromantic and asexual. Um, I think a lot of people have heard the word asexual, and I think people jump to the assumption, understandably, that it just means, oh, you don't like sex, or oh, you hate sex, or oh, you're innocent. Um, or you're just naive. What, am, am I not good enough? I think that that is something that's very common in relationships is that those, those boundaries, whatever boundaries they are, whether it's I need time to myself, whether it's I want to be able to go hang out with friends who are of the opposite gender or 
the, who are of the same gender or I want to be able to spend my money on things that please me. Relationships really do tend to push boundaries and erase boundaries as much as they can. I'm happiest when I'm not dating. I'm happiest when I'm not in a relationship and I'm happiest when I'm not going on a billion first dates just out of obligation because that's all it was for me is societal and other, you know, obligations. Hey, uh, do you want to go over to my place? Uh, would you, would you like to make out? Um, no thanks. Okay, I mean, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, would you like to go to the movies instead? Um, yeah, I would like that. Cool. I'd say my favorite thing about being aromantic and asexual are that it allows me to focus on the rest of my life better. It allows me to love people better because I'm not so focused on loving one single human at a time. It's just nice to know that well, people are out there and they feel the same way as you do. So if I could go back to my younger grade school self, I would give the advice to try to worry less about what peers and others try to influence me to think about myself. To the community in general, I just want to remind them that they are valid and that even if your love doesn't look the same as everybody else's, that doesn't make your love less valid. I just like how uh, we can just be ourselves, you know, like nothing has to be sexual and like, especially for like, it hasn't happened to me yet, but I do really hope for the day when I'm in uh, just a group of asexuals and we're watching a movie and when the sex scene comes on, we can just fast forward and it doesn't have to be awkward at all. <laughs> nothing more validating than knowing that you're not alone. Utah's a magical place with a lot of energy. Within 20 minutes of driving from downtown Salt Lake City, you're in the mountains. It just looks so American to me. You come to Salt Lake City, you come to Utah, you find a crew who is hungry and they want to stretch themselves every single day to sort of match your vision. We were able to crew and cast so much locally. I think that brought so much to the project. It's just easier to sort of make our ideas happen here. Our final piece for today is by students of the Voices of the West Apprenticeship Program. This program, powered by SpyHop Productions, travels to rural regions of Utah for a week-long workshop. In their piece titled Blanding Elementary After School, Students Jax, Zero, Nate, and Azrael highlight this valuable program in their community. So my name is Chantel Valdez. I am the after school site coordinator for Blending Elementary. Um, I've been the site coordinator for the last few years. Uh, previously I was the grant coordinator for San Juan School District see, overseeing after school programs. Um, working with kids. I've always loved working with kids. I, um, even growing up, I was always the one gathering all my nieces and nephews and my uh, cousins. We'd all hang out together. I'd always have art activities, things like that for them to do. I just have always liked kids. And then after I had kids, I was like, hey, we can work with kids. These the after school program provides. So we provide a variety of um, 
activities that kids can participate in. We aim to provide um, those opportunities that they may not see inside of the regular school day. Um, so we try to just broaden what they are able to experience. I hope the kids get from our program or are able to achieve in their futures is that they're able to have a better um, idea of what is available to them. I think sometimes kids don't have as many opportunities to explore different job um, avenues or different careers. Um, so we hope to be able to show them that there is more out there and that maybe spark some interest in something that they'd never see before. I, I think after school programs are important. I think that after school is extremely important to um, working families, to parents who need a safe place for kids to be after school. I think that kids need structure occasionally and I think that we provide a safe and fun and engaging place for them to be where they're not just at home bored with nothing to do. So the difference between our after school program and just the regular school day is we are, we, while we try to be an extension and hit on all those same talk, topics that are um, learned during the school day, we want to provide a more fun and engaging way for them to solidify those skills that they are learning. So the school day may not have the opportunity to have a more hands-on approach and so we try to help them apply those concepts that they're learning in the school day to real life examples or to games or to just play. I coordinate with the school day um, to ensure that we are providing academic um, support for those students that need it. Um, I also coordinate with community partners to make sure that we are um, connecting families with resources in the area. Uh, we also partner with different um, institutions like USU University, uh, the Extension, um, we've partnered with UNHS in the past, just all these different um, places within the county to provide kind of a well-rounded program so that kids have an opportunity to see what is available to them. Hands-on learning I think is extremely important just because it gives them I think there are some kids who learn better that way. When you are able to hold something in your hands, you're able to see it and how all the parts work, um, as opposed to just having it spoken to you or having to write it out a million times. Um, I think just that hands-on approach, I think for some kids is extremely beneficial and it's a fun way for them to remember it. Um, if you give them a fun way to remember something, they're more likely to remember it down the road. So, did you do the homework? Crap. Uh, I forgot to. you forget. Um, can I just see your notes and I'll quickly do it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been signing so much homework. Oh, this cute little video of the squirrel moved in with this rat family. And it was Aww. like one of them. Girl. Okay. It's a little bit of mysticism to the point where he felt a bit elevated. Like that and, oh my god, oh my god, stop! Thanks for joining us for another episode of Students in Focus. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And you can check out past episodes of the show on UEN Video. Don't forget, you can submit your work to be featured here on our YouTube channel. See you next time.